I'm Adrian Haberstadt, Director of Criminal Justice here at Berkeley College. Again, welcome to my YouTube channel, The Justice Center at Dr. Halvey. Working through a playlist titled Green Criminology, and this is video number three. The aim of this uh, session is to identify the main branches of green criminology. By way of review, green criminology is a field of study that focuses on crimes that harm the environment, non-human animals, and concerns human health. There are five main branches of green criminology. Let's work through them together. I will be sharing just a synopsis of, of what these main branches are. If you're taking this uh, course for credit through Berkeley College, you have a printed copy of this lecture that will give great detail to each one of the uh, uh, specific things, these main branches that we're talking about today. But for the sake of time, uh, let me just read through this information for you on this video and you can uh, study it deeper uh, as time permits. But the first main branch of green criminology is environmental crime environmental crime. This branch of green criminology examines the harm caused to the environment through many legal, different legal, illegal activities, such as pollution, deforestation, illegal wildlife trade, and other activities that violate environmental laws. Environmental crime is complex and multifaceted. It encompasses a wide range of unlawful actions that cause harm to the environment. Some of these key areas of focus would be illegal wildlife trade, illegal logging and deforestation, illegal fishing, waste and pollution, environmental damage, and climate change crimes. These main areas of environmental crime are interconnected and often overlap. Nonetheless, they, are all, they all can severely affect the environment, human health, livelihoods, and econo economies. Animal crime would be a second major branch in green criminology. This main branch of green criminology focuses on illegal treatment of non-human animals, including poaching, animal trafficking, animal abuse, and animal testing. Animal crimes are criminal activities that involve animals as victims, and the investigation and prosecution of these cases fall within the purview of local animal welfare and animal rights laws. The primary focus of animal crimes relate to animal welfare or animal rights include animal cruelty, animal fighting, wildlife crimes, animal testing, animal hoarding, animal abandonment, animal theft. It is important to know that animal welfare and animal rights laws vary in every community. So the definition and scope of animal crimes will differ depending on where the crime occurs. Third main branch of green criminology is ecocide or ecocide. This branch examines the destruction of ecosystems and the impact it has on the environment as a whole. Oftentimes it's focused on human activities such as climate change, global warming, and the likes. It refers to the extensive damage or destruction of an ecosystem or environment, either deliberately through the negligence or ignorance of people. The term often describes large-scale environmental destructions caused by human activities. Some of the biggies would be oil spills, deforestation, and pollution. You know, we probably ought to note that some activists and legal experts have proposed that ecocide be considered an international crime similar to war crimes or genocide. Those responsible for causing and contributing to ecocide should be held accountable, they believe, under international law. That idea seems to be gaining increasing attention and support, mainly due to 
the perceived global climate crisis uh, that the media tells us about and the urgent need to protect the world's uh, ecosystems and biodiversity. The significant areas of focus for ecocide include uh, ecological systemic ecocide, uh, again, it's folk, this would be focused on uh, habitats, rainforests, coral reefs, and wetlands. Those things that are systemic are systematic and would involve uh, multi-layers of things. Uh, there will be industrial ecocide, you know, looking at the harms it's caused by industry. There's agricultural ec ec ecocide that would focus on environmental change caused by uh, industrialized farming practices and the need to bring forth litigation to uh, promote soil health and biodiversity and uh, ecosystem re resilience. Climate ecocide would be another. And again, let me just add that climate change is a disputed and controversial topic today. Um, there is science to support it on both sides that, yes, we're in a climate crisis, some would think, and other data shows that not necessarily. And uh, again, I just want to encourage you as critical thinkers uh, to do your research and not swallow a hook, line, and sinker. Uh, the climate crisis nomenclature and propaganda that we hear from the national news and some of our global leaders. In fact, if you're interested in reading more on that topic, I have a book here by James Wallace called Resisting the Green Dragon. Resisting the Green Dragon. And really, uh, it shares good science about where we're at with the, with the climate and the ecosystem and, and uh, offers uh, some solutions that are Boy, not uh, outrageous, <laughs> and uh, it, it focuses uh, on looking at environmentalism not as a world religion, as many are purporting today, and it uh, would not want to create policies that would be devastating to the world's poor and, and things that would be vi global in vision. Uh, regarding climate change and can impact the, uh, how the nations uh, rule themselves, their sovereignty and such. And so it's a good read and I encourage you to delve into that study and be a champion for good science on this topic and be able to speak with a well-informed mind uh, on this subject. But climate ecocide is a uh, a topic that is rising to the forefront and will need to be addressed. But um, cultural ecocide would be another. Climate ecocide and cultural ecocide. Cultural ecocide is a branch that focuses on the loss of cultural heritage and knowledge caused by environmental change or destruction. Those are important things to think about for sure. Another main branch in green criminology is green victimology. Green victimology. You know there are victims of ecological change and disaster. Of course there is. It impacts humans. It impacts their health, their way of life and such. And it needs to be addressed. One of the critical goals of green victimology is to promote, to promote environmental justice which really involves ensuring that all people have access to a clean and healthy environment. And uh, it also seeks to raise awareness about the impact of environmental harm on victims and insists on victim impact to be included in ecological discussions today. That's huge to consider what things are being proposed for the environment and how that will impact people particularly those who are marginalized and less fortunate. <clears throat> the main areas of focus in green and victimology are ecological victimology, climate victimology, 
environmental justice victimology, wildlife victimology. These are just a few uh, uh, that uh, we can bring to light. And again, would encourage you to delve in more and research out each of these and understand the significance of each one. A fifth major branch for green criminology is environmental justice. Environmental justice. This branch focuses on the unequal distribution of environmental harms and benefits among different social groups and how environmental degradation seems to disproportionately affect the marginalized people of the world. Environmental justice refers to the fair and equitable treatment of all people, regardless of their race, ethnicity, income, and other characteristics. It is a movement that seeks to address the unequal distribution of environmental harms and benefits and to ensure that all communities have access to healthy and sustainable environments. This concept uh, emerged within the United States in the, in the 1980s as a response to the disproportionate impact on environmental pollution and other environmental harms on low income communities and communities of color. Uh, it's taken on legs since that time in many ways. Today, the environmental justice movement has expanded globally and encompasses many environmental issues, which would again include climate change, natural disasters, and biodiversity loss. Some fundamental principles of environmental justice include the right to a healthy and sustainable environment, the right to participate in the decisions that affect the environment, and the recognition of the culture and spiritual significance that often are associated with the environment. Again, it aims to ensure that all people, regardless of their background, have access to safe and healthy environments, be a part of environmental decisions that are made with their well-being in mind. The main areas of focus in environmental justice are environmental racism, indigenous environmental justice, climate justice, environmental health, environmental policy. These are just a few of the biggies uh, that are associated as branches with green criminology. Again, I encourage you to delve in and do your own research and develop your thinking. Uh, 